The majority of cameras were made in Japan, Germany, England, Russia and even America. But I'm going to show you four cameras that were made in rather more unusual countries. I'm looking at Hungary, France, Poland and Italy. But let's start in Japan. This is the Asahi Flex 2B, which in 1954 is generally regarded as being the first 35mm SLR with an instant return mirror, right? No, sorry, that's wrong. In fact, this is the first 35mm SLR with an instant return mirror. It was called the Gamma Duflex, it was made in 1948, and it was made in Budapest in Hungary. The maker was a man called Jano Dulevitz, from whence the name of the uh, Duflex came from. Evidently, Mr. Dulevitz made a cardboard prototype in 1939, prior to the Second World War, and then after the war, he developed the real thing. It took 35mm film in the usual way, but instead of 24 by 36 millimeter frame size, which is the usual for 35mm, it took 24 by 32 mm negatives. And it also had a metal focal plane shutter speedy 1 to 1 thousandth of a second. The standard lens of the duplex was a 5cm f3.5 gamma, which was removable on a bayonet mount. It was, of course, a reflex camera, but instead of a pentaprism, which many reflex cameras use, it used four mirrors. In this way, it produced an image in the viewfinder, which was the right way up and the right way round. If we look at the back of the duplex, we see it has two viewfinder windows. One is for the reflex viewing, and the other is a simple direct vision viewfinder. That second one had bright line frames marked for 35mm, 50mm, and 90mm lenses, even though there is no evidence to suggest that anything other than the standard 50mm lens was ever made. OK, let's move from Hungary to France, where in 1952 we find the C-Clock, which was made by the Alsapot company. Now, it's a known fact that for a camera to work correctly, the lens must be a certain distance from the film. This might be as in a box camera, where a solid body keeps the two apart, or it might be with bellows, where the film is kept a certain distance from the lens in a similar way. Looking at the c clop it appears that the lens is far too close to the film. So let's see how that works. Turning to the back of the body then, we see this strange little hump, which actually contains two mirrors. So the light enters the lens in the usual way, hits the mirror at the top, bounces down to the mirror at the bottom, and then is reflected back to the film. Turning to the front of the camera again and removing the base, you can see how the film was loaded. And unlike most cameras where the film runs along the back of the body, the film here runs along the front. And that in turn means that the red window, which you normally find on the back of a body to count the exposure numbers, is now on the front of the body, just below and to the right of the lens. Moving from France, we now enter Poland, where, in 1960, we meet the Alpha. This is a strangely shaped 35mm camera for taking upright pictures. Looking inside the Alpha, you can see how the film travelled from top to bottom and from cassette to cassette. The Alpha, by the way, was made in two different models and in a range of colours. And so finally, we come to Italy where we find the 1955 Sumar Report. This one was made by a company called Cesare Taranti, and it was unusual for having four lenses on a rotating turret. They weren't all there to take pictures, however. Two of the lenses took the pictures, the other two adjusted the view in the viewfinder. It also had a strange way of focusing, not by moving the lenses backwards and forwards, as is the usual way, but by moving the film backwards and forwards in relationship to the lenses. The camera took 6 by 9 centimetre negatives on roll film, film packs or plates. It was originally made as a press camera, but it failed to sell, and therefore today it is very rare indeed. And so there we are. The Duflex from Hungary, the Alpha from Poland, the c clock from France, and the Suma Report from Italy. Four unusual cameras from four unexpected countries.